Here you go. Hey, wait a minute. This is only five grand. Oh. You want it? You don't want it. I want it. That's better. Hello to all the classic people that are returning. I'm glad you're back. I want to welcome any new visitors and let you know that there will be spoilers ahead. Today on Classic Movie Review, we are taking on Film Noir Dance Hall Racket 1953. This movie is one of the lowest ratings I have seen on IMDb.com at 3.5. On RottenTomatoes.com, this film has neither a tomato meter nor an audience score. This movie is terrible. I do not hesitate to highly recommend against watching it, and I'm a Lenny Bruce fan. I'm wearing my beret today is a tribute to the beatniks in the clubs in Greenwich Village and Soho that were watching Lenny in the early days. Lindy wrote the story and screenplay for this bomb. On my list of all film noirs, I have slotted this one at 1056, dead last. That's a place I was reserving for Pillow of Death 1945 based solely on its title. Please don't watch this. You cannot get that time back. Watch the Bob Fosse directed Lenny 1974 with Dustin Hoffman as Lenny Bruce and Valerie Perrine as his wife, Honey Bruce, Knee Harlow. My new book has just come out. It's called Mystery of the Cave. It's book two in the Michael Potts Archaeological Mystery Series. It follows Michael and the crew up in Alabama as they get into a little adventure up there while they're working in a cave. It's about 200 pages long and fairly easy read. Think you might enjoy it? There's links below. Actors. Timothy Farrell played Umberto Scali. Farrell was born in California in 1922. He was a bailiff for the Los Angeles Sheriff's Office. While working as a bailiff, Farrell was in 12 full-length movies. The films were around the level of today's fare, i.e. not very good. The Vice Squad raided the filming of Paris After Midnight, 1951, thinking it was an illegal production. Farrell had a 20-year career in law enforcement. He was convicted of a felony and was fired in 1975. Farrell died in 1989. Comedian Lenny Bruce played the central role of Vincent. He was born in New York State in 1925. Lenny's parents divorced when he was young. Lenny was sent to live with extended family while his mother tried to find a career in show business. In 1942, Lenny dropped out of high school and joined the Navy. Not caring for the military life, Lenny convinced the doctors that he was having homosexual tendencies and was medically discharged. Using his mother's contacts, Lenny slowly found work. He was working in low-end nightclubs and strip joints. In 1951, he married Honey Harlow, which we will discuss later in the show. Lenny was a vanguard of the new age of comics. As such, his topics and language received a lot of negative attention from the authorities. Often, undercover cops would attend his shows and arrest him on obscenity charges following the show. The use of drugs and constant struggles broke Lenny. By 1965, he had trouble finding work and was in financial straits. He played his last show in 1965 in Los Angeles. He was found dead in his home from a drug overdose on August 3, 1966. He was 40 years old. While not understood during his lifetime, Lenny has become a cultural icon. He is mentioned in songs from Simon and Garfunkel, Genesis, R.E.M., and Bob Dylan. He is also pictured on the Beatles album, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. The comedian was portrayed in the above-mentioned Lenny 1974, in a Broadway play of the same name, a character in All That Jazz, and a recurring character in The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. In 2003, New York Governor Pataki granted Lenny a posthumous pardon for his 1954 obscenity conviction. Bernie Jones played Punky, a Swedish sailor who skulked around looking for abandoned drinks. Jones looked like a Stan Laurel impersonator with the same hat and a much larger jaw. He was very out of place and distracting during the film. At the time of the film, the former Honey Harlow was married to Lenny Bruce and was cast as dance hall girl Rose. Harlow was born in a tiny Northeast Arkansas town in Mississippi County in 1927. Strike two. At 17, she was sentenced to a year in the Florida State Prison at Rayford. She was the youngest white woman sent to the state prison at the time of her arrest. With flaming red hair, Harlow worked as a nightclub singer and as a stripper. Harlow met and married Lenny Bruce in 1951 while they were both working in strip clubs and dive bars. They had one daughter. The couple remained married for five years. Following the divorce, 
Harlow was incarcerated on narcotics charges. Bruce took custody of their daughter. Harlow was in two films, Dance Hall Racket 1953 and Princess of the Nile 1954. She later remarried, wrote an autobiography titled Honey, The Lives and Loves of Lenny's Shady Lady, and consulted on the film Lenny 1974. Harlow died in Hawaii in 2005. I will assume Bruce gathered a bunch of his friends for this project. There is just not much to find on Sally Marr as hostess, Bunny Parker as dance hall girl, Joey Abrams as dance hall girl, Ronald Lee, Bill King, Mary Holiday as dance hall girl, Harry Keaton, or Joe Pirro as henchman, or Ice Pick as they called him in the show. Phil Tucker was the film's director. He directed seven full-length films. His first directing job was for today's film. The last film he directed was the made-for-TV film The Cape Canaveral Monsters in 1960. I've seen it, and it's horrible. The seven films have an average rating on imdb.com of 3.47. Hey, if you want to support the show, use the link below to drop by our merch store. We have t-shirts, coffee cups, stickers, a myriad of things. The link's in the description. Thanks for your support. Story. A reporter is interviewing a customs agent, possibly Bill King, and asks for a current story. The agent begins the tale of the dance hall racket. The scene changes to the dance hall as the agent begins. The dance hall is unlike the ones often seen in film noirs, with overly excited bald men happily dancing with sore-footed, indifferent females in prom dresses. The dancing is a lively swing where the other dancers stop to watch a la Soul Train. The dance hall caters to merchant seamen. Punky, Bernie Jones, cruises a joint looking for free and abandoned drinks. In the back, Umberto Scali, Tim Farrell, counts money. Rose, Honey Harlow, Knee Bruce, lazily plays cards. And Vincent, Lenny Bruce, is leafing through a picture magazine. A customer is sitting with a dance hall girl, and she asks if he wants to take a trip to Hawaii. The bartender brings over a couple of plastic plants so the couple can have privacy while they smooch. Hey, what's going on? What gives with this Hawaii bit? Well, when a gal kisses a guy, she likes a little privacy. That's why the palm tree's at. Oh, why do they call it going to Hawaii? Well, the palm tree's in mind yet, stupid. A man with a dog leaves the bar and goes to the back to see Scally. The man with the dog has smuggled illegal diamonds into the country by gluing them under the dog's ears. Scally tells Vincent to pay the man for the diamonds. He gives $5,000. When the seller squawks, Vincent threatens him with his switchblade. The man leaves with the dog and the money. Here you go. Hey, wait a minute. This is only five grand. Oh, you want it? You don't want it. I want it. That's better. Rose is sent to drink with the diamond seller and it's sure he gets a Mickey Finn. In the bar, the diamond man passes his dog to Punky. Rose sits and they order drinks. In the back, Vincent reads the crime report on a former club partner, Victor Pappas, who was released from jail but still had a quarter of a million in gold that he had stolen. Vincent says he sure would like to meet Pappas, and Scalia says he will because he's giving a party for the ex-con the following night. Vincent is then sent on his rounds. The diamond man has his head down on the table and Rose clips his wallet. He perks up and says he knew she was just like all the other dames in the dance hall. He pulls her hair and starts roughing her up. You know, for a while there, I thought you were different from the rest of these crumbs, but you're not. You're all the same. She calls for Vincent as the diamond man tries to burn her face with a cigarette. Vincent pulls a switchblade and kills the diamond man. Oh! Punky comes by and thinks that his friend is drunk. Vincent calls for Scally. Scally chews him out for killing a guy in public. They take the man out back without anyone knowing. When Scally goes back to his office, Fortuna is waiting. She complains about how violent Vincent is. They have a little spat, and Scally wants to marry her. Look, baby, I love you. Let's get married. Married? Oh, how sweet. Mrs. Roberto Scally and her new groom will honeymoon in the groom's vine-covered cell. Look, baby. Don't call me, baby, and let go of my arm. 
She tells him he is a plaything. He explains that he will steal the gold from Pappas after the party. He tries to impress her with his stolen diamonds. She says it may work out. She leaves and Vincent, Rose, and Ice Pick, her henchman, Joe Pirro, report to the boss as ordered. Scally says his crew are dummies and shouldn't kill people that are selling merchandise to the boss. Vincent and Rose are left in the office alone. Vincent drops one-liners such as, Big deal, I killed a guy? This makes me a criminal? Big deal, I killed a guy. This makes me a criminal. They spat a bit and then discuss their love. Rose is a little indifferent. She says she doesn't want to end up as a has-been. Back in current times, the custom agent says they found a diamond, two dance tickets for the dance hall, and a dog license on the dead guy. They bring in an agent from New York to go undercover in the dance hall. The undercover guy starts meeting the people from the dance hall. Do you always take all the tickets? Sure, it's quicker that way. In the dressing room, a little bare skin is shown. A new girl is starting and is told that if a guy gets rough, she should call for Vincent. One of the older dance hall girls gives the new girl the what what about the dance hall. She says the men are all chumps and the new dancers should go for old guys. Punky delivers some one-liners. Vincent brings a girl into the dressing room for an interview. He makes her take her dress off. He gives her a prom dress to wear but insists she remove her bra. Vincent leaves and the girl cries. Another girl helps her get dressed and they show more skin. In the dance hall, a girl shows that they exchange tickets for time. Punky goes around and drinks the leftover drinks. The undercover guy tries to get information from Punky. Ice Pick thinks he knows the undercover agent from a ship that he was on. They start drinking and talking. Don't I know you'll be somewhere? I'm not sure. You look familiar to me. You ever been to jail? Yes. Oh, I remember. You're Edson. Yeah, Edson. Don't you remember? On the After American run. I was Stewart. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, now I remember. They, um, they called you Ice Pick. Ice Pick says that Customs hit that ship shortly after the undercover agent left. He doesn't connect that the agent is the one that set that ship up. Ice Pick invites the undercover guy to the party for Pappas. Rose grabs Punky, and he's been using forged tickets. They throw him out. A blonde dancer is drunk and demanding more booze. Scally sends another dancer to cut her off, and a big cat fight breaks out. The bartender enjoys the show. The blonde beats the other girl and Ice Pick. Scally and Vincent grab her. At Warehouse One, the local custom agents wait to meet with the New York undercover. He tells them that he's going to the party for Pappas. They tell him they will have a squad of men standing by. Scally goes over the details of the party with Vincent. He says only trusted dancers and good customers at the party. Vincent lets Scally know that Ice Pick has invited someone he trusts. Scally says that when he goes for something bigger, he will leave the dance hall to Vincent. Ice Pick comes in and says he's getting married and wants to quit the racket. Scally says okay. A drunk customer does a long crying bit about his hairpiece. The girls in the dressing room talk about how cute Ice Pick is. One flirts with and kisses him. He's not interested. Vincent threatens the bartender with his switchblade. Scally gives Ice Pick some money as he leaves. A guy that had visited the club earlier comes in and says $800 was taken from his pocket while he was at the club. Scally calls Vincent into the office. Vincent pulls out his switchblade and murders the man. The dancer is brought in and slapped for not sharing her stolen money. She lies about the money. Vincent pulls his knife and cuts her dress away until the money is found. They give her a smaller cut and make her take the rest of the night off. Another man comes in and says he has almost 800 tickets saved. He says he will come in and have the place to himself one night. He says he will take a Hawaii trip every 15 minutes. The guy with all the tickets wanders into the dressing room and sees the blonde who got slapped changing her clothes. When she catches the man peeping at her, the blonde demands all of his tickets. He gives over all of his tickets. He complains that he will never get to go to Hawaii. She gives him a kiss. Hey, now I'll never get to go to Hawaii. Oh, come here. Scally is at the head of a party table and says Pappas will be there soon. Pappas, Harry Keaton, arrives for the party. 
Scally offers the ex-con a present for his return. One of the dancers says Pappas cannot talk because fellow prisoners cut out his tongue because he wouldn't tell where the gold was hidden. They have Maxine, probably Sally Marr, dance the Charleston for Pappas. After the dance, Scally gives Pappas his gift. It is Rose wearing only a fur coat. Vincent gets hot and pushes over another guy at the party. Punky goes on the stage and does some really racist native dancing. Rose flirts with Pappas. Vincent goes into the back to ask Scally what gives with Rose. Scally goes for a gun and Vincent grabs it first. Scally says the bit with Rose was to get the location of the stolen gold. Vincent shoots Scally. The undercover agent pulls his gun, which I don't know how he hides when he's slow dancing. Vincent gets past the agent and drags Pappas out into the alley. He pushes Pappas into a doorway and has a gun battle with the undercover agent. Pappas pushes Vincent into the alley and he's shot dead. The movie ends with the reporter and the customs agent. They say the dance hall has a new owner and soon they will be doing it all over again. The movie ends with people happily dancing. Conclusion. There's not a lot to say about this movie. If you're a fan of Lenny Bruce, it might be worth your time, but I don't recommend it. The IMDb records for this movie are a wreck. It is almost impossible to tell who is who. They list Joe Pirro as henchman on the database, but call him Ice Pick in the movie. Punky in the database is called Punchy in the movie, which makes a lot more sense based on how he acts. Harry Keaton is listed in the database, but with no character name, and I believe he was Pappas. Just for fun, I calculated the dance hall rates with an inflation calculator. The 12 cent dance tickets would cost $1.37, which is quite a bargain. However, the kissy face trips to Hawaii would run you around 31 bucks. World famous short summary, crime doesn't pay and neither do bad movies. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe and leave a review where you get your podcasts or YouTubes. It really helps the show get found. As a technical note, references and citation are listed for each show on the site at classicmoviereb.com. Beware the moors. All right, there'll be two squares and a circle pop up. The top square, that's a movie selected just for you. The bottom square is a playlist related to today's film. And the circle will subscribe you and you'll find out every time new content comes out.